Good morning, folks. As a line of plasma filaments collapses at the limb, we get ready to discuss some top news and world events from the last day. We are starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com and looking at the last 24 hours of the Earth-facing half. Very quiet as the dark coronal hole turns through. The bright active regions you see at the left side are trailing it. Only the southern grouping actually has sunspots, despite the size and brightness of the northern umbral fields. And as of this morning, the lead is dragging some puny spots behind him with calm beta magnetism. But if that magnetic zone ahead develops, some spots, their joy tilts would not favor stable interactions between them. If... Last night, we saw how the far side of the sun fired that flare-driven CME and near-halo eruption going the other way from Earth. Enlil Spiral confirms the opposite direction blast this morning. That coronal hole solar wind is likely to arrive tomorrow. Minor geomagnetic storms are expected, but nothing severe. Now let's peek back at some words from the last week's morning news shows. We are watching the coronal hole on approach. Between it and Jupiter's close approach to Earth in a few days, the weeks-long large earthquake drought should end this week. That coronal hole is massive, extending across nearly a fifth of our star, and has been solidly connecting to Earth the last few days via IMF. Earthquake drought looking like it has all the tools to end as Jupiter's close approach is also just five days away. Indeed, all the tools and more. Magnitude 6.9, the second largest quake ever recorded in the state of Hawaii, where volcanoes are actively causing evacuations as well, also at a 6.1 over in the Philippines. In addition to the CME coupling, this chart shows the quake occurred during a phi angle shift, a magnetic reversal in the solar wind. Both of those adding to the coronal hole and the Jupiter alignment, and I'm sorry, but that coronal hole just looks like Hawaii, equatorial and in the middle of a vast sea. Up next, Ian Webster, Meteorshowers.org. This is what's ongoing as the remnants of Halley's Comet produce their annual show here in early May. Best time to get out and see meteors is usually pre-sunrise, and that is especially true now. Due to this comet's anti-rotation compared to Earth, the dust and rocks are coming from the sunrise position anyway. So not only are we moving into the stream at sunrise, when straight up would be our path forward in orbit, but this stream is coming from that direction as well. They will be fast and beautiful when you catch them. Interesting data in from MAVEN and Mars Express on the September 2017 solar storm. It produced the fourth largest radiation event detected at the Red Planet, and there is no shielding currently in existence that would have saved the astronauts en route, in orbit, or even if they were on the ground. We also had a puzzling article come out yesterday detailing where climate change is changing more or less than other places. Blue areas are expected to change less than red areas, according to them, even though thus far the poles have changed the most. And then again, they also said snow would be gone by now, so who knows what's going to happen. Actually, there are a number of people who seem to keep showing that they do know what's what. We have them every year at OTF, and pre-registration begins next week. D'Amico, Dunning, and Robitaille are confirmed. Folks, it is Saturday, so the weekly Fly on the Wall podcast is today. We're hitting the chat session a little early at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. See you there. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.